The only caveat I'd say is I don't think it's exploitation. I have a, a you know, Craig Siebel's. Um, sure. Yeah. So Craig worked on Burn Notice and stuff, and, and he has a philosophy that I think you'll like, which is he has two rates. He has full rate and free. There is no rate in between full rate and free, right? And his philosophy is I am being paid either in money, in which case I expect my full rate, right? Or because that is what I am worth, or I am being paid in relationship and and I am building a relationship and an ongoing something with a collaborator. The one thing I want to point out that I think is so important about the story that you told as it relates to everything that's going on politically in our industry and all the things that I've talked about for years, the word exploitation. And I want to rephrase one of those things and I want to give you my perspective and you can tell me that I'm totally wrong or I'm totally right. Okay. I don't believe that people get exploited. I believe that people allow themselves to be exploited. And I think in your case, somebody could look from the outside and say, well, you are writing for free and doing extra drafts and like you just got taken advantage of, but you clearly didn't because you saw the value in the work that you were doing and you knew willingly, they might not be paying me for this, but it's allowing me to get better at my craft. It's putting myself out there. And it was those extra drafts that went from, yeah, that doesn't sound like it's a good fit to, eh, screw it, let's shoot it. Let's just shoot the pile and see what we got, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't believe that you were ever exploited you were allowing yourself to be exploited, knowing that there was enough value that it was a reciprocal transaction. But I think that there are so many people that just accept that I need, I need to be exploited because that's part of the industry. I have to pay my dues. So I have to go through hell for 10 years or more and sacrifice family and sanity and everything else because that's just the way that it is in Hollywood. And what I'm trying to help people do is learn to use the word no. If you're not getting it reciprocal value and value is not money, sometimes it is, but I'm sure that you've heard this before as a writer and I hear it all the time on the editing side of things, you should never take free work. And I'm like, yeah, you should, you should take free work all the time as long as you're respected and you're getting value out of it. But there's always this binary note, you gotta make sure you're getting paid your full rate. If that's the way that you look at it, you're never gonna, end up doing what you want to do because you have to make those sacrifices, but you can never allow yourself to be exploited unless the value is there. I would say, yeah, I would, the only caveat I'd say is I don't think it's exploitation. I have a, a you know, Craig Siebel's. Um, sure. Yeah. So Craig worked on burn notice and stuff and, and he has a philosophy that I think you'll like, which is he has two rates. He has full rate and free. There is no rate in between full rate and free, right? And his philosophy is I am being paid either in money, in which case I expect my full rate, right? Or because that is what I am worth, or I am being paid in relationship and, and I am building a relationship and an ongoing something with a collaborator, right? And so, and he's like, if somebody's like, well, I can give you $400. He's like, I do not. The only thing he will accept is expenses, right? Basically like if, yeah, it's like the gas money or whatever, but that's all because his thing is he doesn't want you thinking that because, you know, his card rate for the day is a thousand dollars or $2,000 or, I mean, now he's a producing director, so it's a totally different thing. But like back when he was a production designer, right? If his day rate was a thousand dollars, he didn't want you giving him three hundred dollars and thinking that like you're good now, right? Like you know, basically that is exploitation, right? Exploitation is giving someone who makes a thousand dollars a day three hundred dollars a day and being like, "Catch you later, bud. There's your three hundred bucks. You got it, right?" Um, and so the thing that he looks at when he takes a project is. Like, and, and by the way, sometimes it's not going to work out. Right. But if he takes a project and he works for free, he's like, okay, is this someone I believe in? Right. Is this someone with whom I actually want an ongoing relationship so much that I'm willing to do my best work for this person? Right. And if that is the case, 
he's like, yep, I'll do it. Right. Like, and, and he still does free work to this day. Right. And we got together, like he was the production designer on all my short films. He would show up to do kids films with me and just be like, Hey, we're doing, I'm doing this thing for charity. I'm making this film or whatever. And he'd be like, Oh yeah, I'm there. Right. And he never took a dime. Right. Now on the other side of it, he knew that I understood the nature of this relationship. He knew that he could trust me is essentially the thing. Right. And so I think that for people who are in that position, you've got to look at it and go, Hey, do you like trust your instincts and be like, okay, is this someone who I actually trust? Right. Is this someone who I actually believe has my back, you know, will, will, you know, that we really do have an ongoing relationship, et cetera, et cetera. And sometimes you'll be wrong. Right. But that's just the price of doing business, right? You, you don't need to be right 100% of the time. You need to be right like 60% of the time. And those gigs are worth doing, right? But if you do a free job for someone who you know in your heart of hearts doesn't really know your name or care who you are or, you know, whatever, right? Then, like, that's a, then you are allowing yourself to be exploited.